as Emerald Chiffon. Only after she'd been sitting with him for half an hour and her friends had lost interest and turned back to their conversations, did Levinoff realize that her gesture had been sincere. There was an awkward pause in the conversation. Rosa smiled. I haven't even introduced myself, she said. You're Rosa, Levinoff said. The next afternoon, Rosa turned up for a second meeting just as she'd promised. When she glanced at her watch and realized how late it had got, they planned a third meeting. And after that, it went without saying that there'd be a fourth. The fifth time they met, under the spell of Rosa's youthful spontaneity, halfway through a heated discussion about who was a greater poet, Naruda or Dario, Levinov surprised himself by proposing they go hear a concert together. When Rosa jumped to agree, it dawned on him that, miracle of miracles, this lovely girl might actually be developing feelings for him. It was as if someone had struck a gong on his chest. His whole body reverberated with the news. A few days after the date at the concert, they met in the park and had a picnic. This was followed the next Sunday by a bicycle ride. On their seventh date, they saw a movie. When it was over, Livinoff walked Rosa home. They were standing together, discussing the merits of Grace Kelly's acting versus her unbelievable beauty. When all of a sudden, Rosa leaned forward and kissed him. Or at least she tried to kiss him, but Livinoff, taken off guard, backed away, leaving Rosa tipped forward at an awkward angle, neck outstretched. All night, he'd been monitoring the ebb and flow of distance between their various body parts with growing pleasure. But the shifting measurements had been so fractional that this sudden charge by Rosa's nose almost reduced him to tears. Realizing his mistake, he blindly stuck his neck out into the gulf. But by then, Rosa had already counted her losses and pulled back into safer territory. Livinoff hung in the balance, enough time for a waft of Rosa's perfume to tickle his nose, and then he beat a hasty retreat. Or he began to beat a hasty retreat when Rosa, not wanting to take any more chances, Chop put her lips into the contested space, momentarily forgetting that appendage, her nose, which she remembered a fraction of a second later when it collided with Livinoff's. At the instant, his lips mashed against hers, so that with their first kiss, they became blood relatives. <laughs> Livinoff was giddy on the bus ride home. He flashed a smile at anyone who looked his way. He walked down his street whistling. But as he slipped the key into his lock, a coolness entered his heart. He stood in his dark room 
It's so amazing. 
as I can through day-to-day -day work and healing my thoughts and dissecting them and my anxiety, just, just really dissecting myself and telling myself more kind things, you know, doing all the work that I can. That is why I'm so hopeful that it can work out even though he's broken because I have been broken too and this situation where I literally broke me pretty bad and I think he knows that now but I'm so embarrassed for how I've acted because I've been so so shattered
something bad. Or that's just very emotionally confusing to you. It's not always good to have. So, yeah. My advice to you guys is don't move too fast. Especially if you're sensitive. Or if your partner is sensitive emotionally. Or especially if they've been assaulted or sexually abused in any way. Because I had no idea, like, how much this would hurt me. I mean, okay, I knew <laughs> I'd never get involved with people because I know that if somebody doesn't emotionally care about me, then I'm going to be shattered, so I just don't. And so, with this guy, it's just kind of been really intense because I know he cares about me. He's just really scared because he carries um, a little Russian astronaut on his lapel. If, if you catch my drift, is my hair super messed up? <laughs> anyway, despite all of this pain that I'm speaking of, I just kind of speak about I don't know. I'm just telling you guys my story. I'm not trying to speak badly about the one person that means the most to me. <sighs> just to make that clear. I think it's all very interesting how much it lines up with this book. Is it not? Is it? I think it is. It's very interesting. Okay. What's also interesting is I think it is hard for my living off to accept that me, a young woman, would have feelings for him. But what is also interesting is that it's been really hard for me to accept that anyone would have those types of feelings for me in a serious way and not just be trying to use me. Yeah, lots of changes in my mind happening, lots of learning, lots of Lots of growing wisdom. I've been wise since a very young girl. And it's kind of strange to start seeing myself with a more respectful eye, thank God. And to start seeing myself grow through all of these lessons and to, and to know that I have been doing the right thing and I have been having very good intentions and it isn't my fault that things haven't been going good. It's just kind of time. I've been a little impatient, and that's, I have, I've done, I have made some mistakes, okay, don't get me wrong, but my intentions have been very good, and I've been doing my best as far as improving so that I stop making mistakes and stop embarrassing myself and stop being manic and doubting myself so much to the point where it scares people. I don't actually doubt myself that much, it's just moments where I do, and then oh, you tell someone and they're like, oh, like scared of you, you know, but, and then later you're like, I didn't, that's not actually how I feel about myself, why did I say that, damn it, okay, I'm rambling because I'm starving, I should eat before I have to go to work, okay, make sure to give this video a like if you did enjoy it, and Hit that notification bell if you want to see the next episode of this. I'm going to try to come out with two a week now, but I don't know if that's going to work because I planned to come out with one on Friday. And guess what? Today is Friday, <laughs> and I haven't gotten to film it until
was of saxophone toys. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> anyway, my favorite part about this website isn't even the toys and inclusivity. It is the article that they give you about saxophone education. It is so hard to keep remembering to say saxophone. You go to this tab and there's tons of articles about gender, how-to guides, relationships, sax, body positivity, toys, tools, and my favorite I found, mental health. Super helpful. It's so wonderful to see an adult website that promotes saxophone wellness and education rather than just trying to throw stuff at you to buy constantly. Consider shopping around the site. And again, my affiliate link is in the description below. And if you can't spend money right now, I fully understand. Check out the website anyway and read the articles they have to offer because it's never too late to learn new things. Purchase anything through my link, then I will get part of that commission so you would be supporting me. It would be great. By the way, I have other links if you want to check those out. They will be in my link trick below as well. This is hard because I have like morning time phlegm and it's getting colder outside as the seasons change. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna do my best y'all. Okay. This is bad y'all. This is bad. Maybe I shouldn't film in the mornings. <laughs> I'm already baking in the early sun. It reminds me I gotta turn off my heater right here. Oh. <laughs>